Thank you for joining us. Welcome to the Kentucky Society of CPAs Behind the Numbers. This is part three of Jacqueline Badeau's Emotional Intelligence segments, and uh, welcome back, Jacqueline. Yeah, very happy to be here. Part three, everyone. I would like to now go into more of a how in your personal life and how you can utilize EQ to strengthen your relationships with family and friends and get through some difficult discussions or, or situations. Maybe if you have some tips on how to get through some of the holidays, if, if there's some miscommunication, those kind of things. Oh my goodness, Kimberly, right? This is a can of worms. <laughs> so many people um, are going to be going through, I mean, everyone, oh my goodness, this year has been crazy anyway. Normal day-to-day -day life is hard enough. Now we're approaching the holidays, like you said, where some families or friends may be getting together. We're just normal day-to-day -day things. So how do you kind of use EQ to get through this kind of stuff? The first tip, you know, I would really start with really understanding yourself. If you really understand your emotions and your triggers specifically, because, oh my goodness, I don't know if I've met anyone who said that a holiday or uh, some gathering can't be stressful for probably a billion different reasons, especially in 2020. But if you can really understand your triggers and then know how to better deal with those situations. So first of all, if you don't know what your triggers are, I would, I would say a quick tip you could do to understand your emotions a little bit, your triggers is every day, write down like the strongest emotion that you experience. So some people like journaling, some people just like writing it down. It's, it's whatever you like best. Just write down those emotions that you experience. I would say the strongest or maybe a, a couple um, strongest every day. And then every night, like reflect on it, look at that list, literally look at the list and kind of go, well, what was going on? What were the circumstances? And you'll start, if you start like doing this for, just do it for two weeks, right? And that should take 30 seconds to do. And then step back and take a minute or two to reflect on that every night and go, wow, I'm starting to see patterns that every time I talk to my ex, my, my uh, ex, I mean blank as in my spouse, my mother, my, my friend, my coworker, you know, whatever it is, I, you know, I get really bent out of shape or that person annoys me or I, whatever it is, right? If you start recognizing patterns, you also will start recognizing your triggers or there's maybe certain times of the day that you should handle things and not handle other things. So think about that. And if you're writing down the time of day, what day it is, what were the circumstances around it? What was that emotion? Again, reflecting, that will really get you to understand your emotions better. And then the next step is all about then dealing with it, right? Then being able to express it differently. And sometimes you need to just recognize what are those things? What are those, like if you were wound up about something, how do you know? Like if you looked at your faces of your family or your friends um, at a meetup or a family gathering or what have you, how do you know that you're wound up by just looking at them? Could, do you see them kind of backing away, avoiding you? Do you see them agging you on? Are they getting tense? Are they looking confused? If you start trying to pick up on cues, those, I call them signals, of what is showing you your emotions, that can also help you understand how you're expressing them. And then once you're aware of them, and then you know how you're expressing them and maybe that's not how you intended, then you can start working on them to actually express them better. I think I said in an earlier podcast, sometimes you know if you think that you express something in a way that was unintentional, then you should ask, say, you know, get one of your trusted friends or something at that next gathering, um, a safe gathering, or a close family member if you all are in your bu quarantine bubble together and go, you know, how did you think I came across when I was talking about X subject? And that person may be like, um, you were like very, um, came across very wound up and that you were kind of getting mad about it. And you're like, oh my goodness, no, that's not what I meant. I was just very passionate. I get very passionate about that. And that trusted person in your family or friend circle can go, yeah, that's just not how it came across. 
So then you can start getting, you know, that's a step, another step to go, okay, have someone kind of relay back what they saw or what they heard, right? Because body language. And then you can then start doing that reconciliation process and be like, oh my gosh. So some tips are understand yourself better. You know, look for the signals in other people to see how you know they're reacting to what you're saying you're doing. Ask a trusted person for some feedback right after a moment to see if you've expressed yourself. And then you can get better of having particular conversations. And as you can imagine, that can also help improve your relationships and that type of thing and listen to people more and all that kind of stuff. Those are all great tips. I did have a, another thought about the holidays and uh, family gatherings and, and dealing with that kind of thing in this environment. And I know for myself, you know, I really miss my grandmother. She lives in Ohio and I haven't seen her. I probably, I mean, it's been probably almost a year now. I mean, it's been a long time and I've been waffling about, do I go see her for Thanksgiving or Christmas? And there is on one side of my family, they're planning on having traditional Thanksgiving, Christmas. I don't know if I'm comfortable with that, you know, and, those, and I don't know how they'll feel about that and trying to figure out those difficult conversations and trying to utilize these skills <laughs> to maybe have bring it up to them. You know, I'm not comfortable doing a large family gathering. I miss my grandmother. How can we basically make the best of the situation? And so having those conversations and listening to their concerns and trying to express my concerns and those kind of, and really get them to listen to those concerns and maybe come up with some solutions that will help all of it everybody right <laughs> and I, I really think utilizing some of the skills you spoke about just um do you have anything else that you could add that might yeah. help those situations i know a lot of people will probably have them oh my God. right this is probably something that i think has come up in almost every conversation for me personally and a lot of them even professionally is yeah what are you doing for the holidays and what do you think and you're going to hear a lot of opinions so I'm going to start with one general statement that has gotten me through a lot of COVID type of circumstances. You can only control your actions. That's all you can control, what you do, and that's all you can do. You can't necessarily control someone else and make them do something, I guess, unless it's like your child or something. But, but generally speaking, because it could lead to a lot of frustrations, right? Maybe you don't think that family member should visit a grandparent or should not wear a mask or there's so many different issues going on right now that can lead to so many um you know difficult conversations as you said and oh my gosh that circumstance you described of not seeing your grandmother for almost a year now so many people are also going through that and i i can see how that could be so difficult for you guys when you haven't seen your loved one and you're missing them but you also want to make sure um, she's protected and healthy and you don't do anything to, to hurt that, right? So, oh my gosh, that's such a hard decision. So first, my advice would be first, you got to do what's best for you and, and you can only control your actions. So that would be the first thing I would say. Second thing I would say is when you're having these conversations with family, just be very clear about kind of where you're at in your thought process. I think if we openly communicate as honestly and openly as we can, that's going to help us. I'm not going to say in every situation, it's going to be perfect because it won't. It's, we're all humans. It happens, right? But open communication. If you're talking to fellow family members, you know, right now I'm kind of uncomfortable. I'm on the fence about celebrating different holidays with each other because I haven't really been in large group settings right now. I'm really worried about my grandmother because goodness gracious, I don't have any symptoms of COVID and I will take any measure possible, um, you know, to make sure I'm negative, but lots of tests and stuff aren't hundred percent accurate. And so, and you may not have symptoms. So you're like, you know, I don't want to do anything that would endanger a family member because that's just something that I wouldn't want to do, but I miss her dearly or I miss you guys dearly. So that is kind of where I'm at right now. I'm just in this balance. I know the only thing I can do is control what I do and, and be comfortable with that. Um, so I'll let you know when I make a decision. That's, you know, if someone's in that process where they're not quite, they haven't made up what they 
want to do. Maybe you have made up your mind. Again, it's just all coming from a good place. I know we're all on the same page. We all miss each other. We all want to be together. Right now, um, I'm not comfortable being in those situations. Um, you may be, and I support you because you know you're my family. I just I, I wish for you the best, safe and health, you know, healthy and and all that kind of stuff. And that's all you can do, right? And so you've got to kind of make your decision. And, and that's part of EQ is that decision-making process of thinking of those objective things, those people things. And ultimately you've got to think in this kind of situation, what you're comfortable with, because you can't necessarily control everybody. There's alternative ways to communicate with family during holidays if you choose not to be with them for various reasons. And it could be Zoom. There's a lot of, I know there's a lot of, um, people who have helped their grandparents get on the phone with Zoom or get on a computer or like in a little center in nursing homes or what have you. And there's a lot of people who've really helped through that. I've seen people who have gone to the place and just had communications through like a door or a window and just had, you know, some short conversations where uh, maybe they're outside or maybe they're, you know, they have something in between them. And some people probably have had interactions with different family members. Again, it's all an individual choice, but I would say it's definitely a hard one. You gotta do best for you and what you think is good for you and your family. Express your intentions, express that you care and miss everyone dearly. And hopefully this is all very short term, regardless of the way you know you make your decision. So hopefully this isn't in 10 years we're still talking about this. <laughs> Right, oh, but there could be, <laughs> yeah, but there could be alternative ways to still communicate with your family and be together in the holidays, even if you aren't physically um, elbow to elbow with them. So you could also be creative in those type of things. Thank you for those tips. I also want to share with you guys that Jacqueline has agreed to write a column in the Kentucky CPA Journal, and there'll be uh, some leadership, more leadership tips and some more EQ and maybe something else as well. And thank you so much, Jacqueline, for joining us on the podcast and doing this series with us. I think you gave a lot of good tips throughout each part of the series. And I, I look forward to all the articles next year. And Jacqueline has also, this year, she has taught ethics in our um, professional issues updates. We have one more left on November 30th. So I hope you, if you haven't had a chance to attend that, that you will, and you can register for that on kycpa.org. And join us back next month for um, Behind the Numbers podcast.